All right, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about decomposition reactions. My name is Neil, and I'm going to do my best to break down and explain how these reactions work, how they get started, and ultimately how do you write a balanced chemical equation for one with the right products. Now when I hear the word decomposition, I don't know about you, but in my mind I see visions of things decaying or falling apart whole objects that are no longer whole, but instead separating into their components. Does that make sense to you? Um, if it does, well, that's exactly what's going to happen in this category of chemical reaction. Let's take a look at how compounds break apart and separate into components. If we think about examples of decomposing matter in the world of biology, let's say a fallen tree that will slowly disintegrate over time, Decomposition can often be a slow, gradual process. In chemistry, sometimes we want this decomposition to happen more quickly. So these reactions are well known for sometimes needing something to kickstart the process, get it going, and allow it to proceed at a faster rate. Okay, so how do we do that? Oftentimes decomposition reactions require things like heat, electricity, or a chemical catalyst. In the example of the decomposition of sugar, the sugar molecules are actually split up into carbon atoms as well as some water vapor, but it needs sulfuric acid to catalyze the reaction. The same goes for the classic elephant's toothpaste decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. We use a catalyst, sometimes potassium iodide, to allow the breaking apart of the chemical bonds to happen more efficiently. So just remember, decomposition reactions are often associated with an input of heat, electricity, or a chemical catalyst to get things going. One thing beginners need to be able to do is look at chemical equations and identify the category that they fall into. Teachers love to give questions like this. There's a list of equations, you identify them as single replacement, decomposition, synthesis, etc. Okay, so what are we going to look for? That's going to allow us to say with confidence that a reaction, a chemical equation, is decomposition. Well, behind me I have two examples of decomposition reactions. And as you inspect them, take a look, and look for common things between them, I think you'll agree with me that what both of these have in common is one single reactant. Just one thing on the left side of the arrow. All decomposition reactions are going to begin with one compound, and then we're going to look at how it breaks apart. Okay, let's write some chemical equations. All right, for our first example, let's look at the decomposition of copper one oxide. Now we're gonna begin by writing the chemical formula for copper one oxide on the left side of the arrow. That's gonna be our only reactant, right? Because decomposition reactions only have one starting material. Now in order to get this chemical formula, I considered that copper has a plus one charge and oxygen has a minus two charge as an ion, and I crisscross those charges so as to create a neutral ionic compound. I also listed this as a solid because unless we're told otherwise, ionic compounds tend to be crystals at room temperature. Now on the right side of the arrow, we have to predict the products. And remember, decomposition means the copper and oxygen are going to separate. So I'm gonna write their chemical symbols separate from one another. Now what else do we need to consider? Well firstly, we have a metal copper. Metals at room temperature are usually considered to be solids. And then we have oxygen, which is one of our diatomic gases. So you already know that that's gonna need a small two subscript and a G for gas. Okay, is this equation balanced? I don't think so. I'm seeing more copper here, more oxygen there. So we can attempt to balance it by putting a two here. Then we're also going to need to put a two here to balance out the oxygens. But of course that creates four coppers. So we're going to need to go back in, erase this number two, and make that a four. So now we have four coppers. We have two oxygens and two oxygens. This is a perfectly balanced decomposition reaction. All right, let's do another example together. In this case, we're going to be looking at the decomposition of water. This is a well-known reaction that can be initiated by using electricity to provide the energy that will split the hydrogen and oxygen apart. One note for you, anytime you're looking at a decomposition reaction, and it mentions something about electricity or heat being used to start the reaction, remember you don't actually need to write those forms of energy in your chemical equation. 
Okay, so we have our H2O liquid. What are we gonna write as our products? Well, we're gonna split these two elements apart from each other. So we'll have hydrogen and we'll also have oxygen. But let's be careful about how we write their symbols. You should know that both hydrogen and oxygen at room temperature are diatomic gases. So we're gonna to need to put a subscript of two after both of them. We're also gonna to need to add a G in parentheses to document the state of matter. Now we always wanna to check to make sure we're abiding by the law of conservation of matter. Do we have the same number of atoms on both sides? I don't think we do, there's a small imbalance here. So we're gonna add a coefficient of two and that'll uh, make the number of oxygens the same on the left and right side. And then we're gonna to have to go over here and put a two in front of the H2. This is the balanced chemical equation for the decomposition of water. Okay, let's do an example where you guys come up with the answer and then I'll check your work. All right, here's your opportunity to test your understanding. I bet you're gonna get this one right. I want you to try to come up with a balanced chemical equation for the decomposition of sulfur dioxide gas. I wanna give you one tip. When sulfur is alone as a standalone element, when it's not in a compound, it's common to represent it as S subscript eight, okay? So put that into your equation to make sure it's right. That's S subscript eight. That's the formula for solid sulfur. All right, come back and check your answer once you've tried this one out. Okay, congratulations if you got this question right. The answer is eight SO2 gas decomposes into S8 solid and eight oxygen molecules represented as O2. Now, if you didn't get this question right and you wanna follow up and get some clarification on how we came up with this answer, please just leave a comment below. All right, let's try one more example problem. What are the two products for the decomposition of sodium oxide? Pause the video and see if you can figure it out and come back for the answer. The correct answer is Na2O solid decomposes and breaks down into sodium metal and oxygen gas. Now we get this chemical formula by using charges. Na is plus one and oxygen is two minus, so we crisscross those. Sodium is a metal, so we're just gonna represent it as a solid and oxygen is a diatomic gas. Folks, if you've been following along with this video, understanding the explanations and getting these problems right, you're well on your way to mastering decomposition reactions, so congratulations. One note, sometimes things decompose into three or four different products. Those reactions can look really intimidating. You'll notice all the examples I gave you, the compound only separated into two products. At the high school level, although you would recognize those other more complicated reactions as decomposition, your teacher's probably not gonna expect you to predict the products. We generally keep it to ones where you have a binary compound and it's separating into just two things. Okay, thanks for watching this video and for supporting the channel. If you haven't hit the like button yet, it would be amazing if you could do that. And I look forward to seeing you in the next edition of Neil's Not So Boring World of Chemistry.